Hello everybody. Today I'm going to discuss the solution of a new CSS task. And uh, the task I'm going to discuss is Counting Towers, a dynamic programming task which was added earlier this year. And uh, as far as I could see, nobody managed to have a good explanation for this problem. So I decided to do it because it is an interesting problem and I got to discuss it during uh, my classes with the students. And uh, I really found some interesting ideas which can be worth discussing. So let's begin. We, are, we have to build a tower whose width is 2 and height is n. And we need to find the number of different towers we can build for a given n. And we have t values of n for which we have to actually find the answer. And since this number is quite big, we need to print the answer modulo 1 billion 7, 10 to the 9 plus 7. Since it is stated that the problem involves dynamic programming, we obviously need to think at uh, some base case and some recurrence, as it is usual when it comes to dynamic programming tasks. At first, it might look uh, rather hard to find a recurrence for this problem. But I'm going to show you a technique which is used quite often in dynamic programming tasks. And it is really helpful in order for you to find the solution for this problem as well as for other problems which are similar to this one. Because as you know, with CSS, they are posting educational tasks meant uh, for people who are starting out with diverse techniques. And uh, they are looking forward to become better at uh, those techniques. So let's begin with the uh, solutions for n equal to 2. There are 8 solutions. I'm going to draw a square for each of them because the width is 2 and the height is 2 as well. And uh, this is the um, this is the empty square. It, is formed only by one square. We have this square, this one, this one, and this one as well. And on the vertical side, we also have this one and this one. And as you can see, there are eight possible ways of doing it for the given sample test case. So n equal to two. Again, it doesn't really tell us anything, at the first glance, but we can observe something rather interesting. Let's mark with uh, orange the lines such that there is no border between them. So these lines. Also these two, even though the border does not exist, we can dash it. This one and uh, nothing else, I guess. The other ones have border in the middle. And with the green, the lines with border. And as I said earlier, we can just dash this line. But it doesn't actually exist. But it's easier for people to actually see the recurrence, I guess. Now, what we can observe is that uh, we can basically now find some kind of recurrence based on whether the last line is actually an orange type of line or a green type of line. And let's look at how do the transitions work. So here we have two possible ways of going from an orange type of line to another orange type of line of so these two. We have one way of going from a green type of line to an orange type of line and uh, one way of going from an orange type of line to a green type of line and four ways of going from a green type of line to another green type of line and these four cases so this one this one this one and this one are actually the four cases we will actually have in our dp solution so these will be the transitions and based on that, we can actually find the state quite easily. So the state is going to be something like dp of 0 or 1. 
and i, which is basically the number of ways to find the uh, so number of solutions possible up to line i, if the last type of line is either orange or green. And uh, the recurrence are ex the transitions are basically what I said earlier on. At this point, I think it's easier to just check out the implementation since I have the transitions written quite clearly there. So as you can see, dp of i and 0 and dp of i and 1, I mean, it doesn't really matter. In the uh, sketchpad, I wrote them as 0 and i and 1 and i, but it's the same thing. And the number of ways to add to the 2 times i square such that the last two squares are either united or not united. What I did in the solution was to pre-compute all the values of dp, and then at the end, uh, when I have to read the input, I just print out the answer, which is the sum of the two values, and then I print the answer, obviously, if I do the mod before it. Now let's look a bit at these four lines. So as you can see from the first line, which is the base case, because we have one way of having an orange type of line, and one way of having a green type of line. We can go from line i to line i plus 1 exactly in the way I described it earlier in the sketchpad. Two ways of going to, from an orange type of line to another orange type of line. One way of going from uh, orange type of line to a green type of line. One way of going from a green type of line to an orange type of line and four ways of going from a green type of line to another green type of line. Implementing uh, this recurrence, as well as being careful at uh, the modulo, are necessary in order for the problem to be solved. And after you get to do that, you will realize that the solution for this problem is actually not as hard as it might sound at the beginning. Like, even when I first read this problem, it took me, for example, around 10 minutes to figure it out, because it seemed quite hard. But when I got to draw the solutions and found this nice visualization, I realized that it's much easier than it sounds. So that's why I think it's an interesting problem to solve. If you liked watching this video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell button in order to be the first one to get access to the new videos. You can also join the Discord server where we have nice discussions about competitive programming. Until the next time, stay safe, good luck, and goodbye.